Herbert Thomas Nazi Bolt, one of the 75 soldiers identified in 2010. Born on September 10, 1893 in Newtown, Sydney, where he grew up to become a tough, fair and spirited young man, both on the rugby field and in the war front. After attending Newtown Public School, his career as a rugby player kicked off and his love for the game was definitely shown in his 52 games, triumph against Queensland twice in interstate matches, all achieved through his dedication between 1912 and 1915. During this time, Herbert also married Jenny Hughes, and together they moved to southern Sydney where they started a family, welcoming a baby girl, Mary Monica, whom Herbert called Little Mona. On the 7th of September 1915, just three days before his 22nd birthday, Herbert enlisted in the AIF and embarked on HMAT for Egypt on the 23rd of December, when his daughter was just 10 months old. Countless people came to witness their departure, throwing streamers to bid them farewell. 1915 came to a close at sea, with Herbert eager for the new year. Arriving in Egypt on the 21st of January the following year, Herbert and the other recruitment spent five months in training before being transferred to the 55th Battalion. According to Herbert, this time was filled with unanticipated days of work and training, often spoiling their already limited time to rest and recover. However, Herbert commented that these things are common to soldiers whose life is one of uncertainties. Uncertainty was definitely a fitting word for Herbert and the other soldiers' experiences. Some days were filled with joyful concerts, football games, church parades and historical day trips, in great contrast to the despair of illness, unsanitary food and water and burials of fallen soldiers, which would terminate any of the positivity on board. On Friday the 3rd of March, Herbert recorded in his diary, I witnessed a soldier's funeral, a chap from the 58th Battalion. Quite a strange performance for the first few. The death was from illness. This was not an unknown event and throughout Herbert's time in service, he witnessed the death of countless good mates and head officers to artillery incidents, heat stroke and disease, even having a bad case of influenza himself. On Wednesday the 15th of March, Herbert was made Lance Corporal. By the 31st of May, he had been promoted to full corporal position, his last rank before he was killed in action, and was keen to tell his wife of the news. I have some good news for you, and that is that I have been made a corporal now at the rate of 10 shillings a day, equivalent to one dollar. The SS Caledonia sailed to France on the 22nd of June, with Herbert on board, arriving at the destination eight days later, where Herbert, along with the countless other soldiers, would serve their country with dedication and pride. It was on this battlefield that Herbert was killed in action, left beside thousands of other brave soldiers, accounting for the most tragic event in Australian military history. It was during this battle that Herbert met his good friend and colleague, Francis Johnston. I knew Bolt well. He and I were mates. We enlisted and left Australia together in the 7th Reinforcements to the 17th Battalion. His initials were HT and he was called Nazi. His number was 3009. We joined the 55th Battalion at Tel Kabir. On the morning of the 20th of July at about 5am at Fleur Bay, in the communication trench near the first line of German trenches, as we were retiring from the third line of German trenches, he and I were close to one another when we were attacked by the Germans. He got more than six of them with his bayonet and the butt of his rifle, when he got a bullet through his head. He fell instantly, being killed outright. He was as game as any man, and was a well-known Newtown football player. Herbert Bolt never failed to stay in contact with his family back at home, and during his service overseas, would send letters home to his wife to inform her of his experiences and keep updated on life back at home. My dear wife, another short note to let you know how we are doing. You will notice by the date of this letter that today is Good Friday. Well, dearest, there are no hot cross buns over here. The only way we appreciate this day is by having a church parade. On Tuesday next, the 25th, we are having a holiday in honour of Anzac Day. It is 12 months since that memorable landing, so there is to be sports entitled Anzac Day Sports. Real good cash prizes too. He would finish every letter by saying, Remember me to all at home and give little Mona a kiss or two from me, and these for yourself. 
Herbert Nazi Bolt was just 22 when he was killed in action in Flaubert, France on the 20th of July. For 90 years, Bolt and countless other soldiers lay unidentified in a mass grave at Pheasant Wood until his name, memory and dignity was finally restored in 2010 and will continue to be lived on by his great-grandson Steve Shelley, great-granddaughter Josie Shelley and all other family members. Like all the other soldiers involved in the Battle of Fromel, Herbert Nazi Bolt will always be remembered and acknowledged for his courage, bravery and service. Herbert Bolt witnessed the commemorations for the first Anzac Day, which has now been a traditional event for over 100 years, to remember those who were proud to serve their country. However, Anzac Day must not be the only day that we acknowledge our country's history and those who paved the way for current and future generations to live greater lives. It is important that every day we appreciate the fallen soldiers like Herbert Bolt, who are proud to be Australian, and we too should be proud to live in a country with such a rich history of service and bravery.